Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and today I'm back for something completely different and something which I've actually been putting off for a long time because I'm kind of nervous. I have bought oh, art resin. So this will be the first time ever that I'm going to open these little bottles and the first time I'm going to ever use any resin on my paintings. So I've picked a couple of little mini canvases first of all. These are just the small bottles, it's not even their getting starter kit. These are four ounces each. So I've got four ounces of resin and four ounces of hardener, making eight in total. So it doesn't give me a lot to work with, but even so, this was like $60 over here in Cayman. So I need to um, make this count today. So I've got two tiny little three inch canvases and um, I've prepped both of them in advance. This one here, if you can see, I've just added a little bit of glitter to it. And that is this one which I was able to find in my local art store. It's Deco Art Craft Twinkles Writer. It's basically a glitter paint writer. So it comes out a bit like glitter glue. It's got a, a nozzle on the top. And I've just followed some of the designs on the painting and just added a little bit of glitter because I wanted to see what that would look like um, once it has the resin on it and obviously it gives it a little bit more um, texture on the surface than if it was just um, you know like a metallic paint itself. This one here um, is just acrylic paint doesn't have anything on it but what I do have is this I've got some ultra fine glitter so I went through all my old craft supplies to see you know what have I got that I can work on I've got this blue glitter which I, I can't remember what I even bought it for but it's very very fine so I'm going to try and do two one with the glitter already in it and then one I'm going to try and mix the glitter in with the leftover resin to pour on this one but like I say it's my first time I don't want to try anything too ambitious so we will see what happens so the first thing I need to do is get on some gloves. Um, I'm using the art resin and it doesn't have any of the nasty fumes. So it says that a lot of the other resins do. So I'm using it in a well ventilated area nonetheless. I've got the windows open on the front, the door open on the back. Oh, I'm like, it's so hot in here that I can't get these gloves on. I'm gonna have to go and get some talc or something and then I'll be back. Okay, the gloves are on, I'm ready. So I've looked at the calculator on the Art Resin website and I've these canvases are three inches, but I put in four inches just to be sure, just because I want to make sure I've got enough to cover the sides. And it tells me for um, four inches, I need four by four inches, I need 16 milliliters. So 16 milliliters is about a tablespoon, which is 15. So I figured if I put a tablespoon of each, because they do need to be matched one to one ratio. So I'll put a tablespoon of resin, tablespoon of hardener, I'll end up with two tablespoons, which should be enough to do two mini canvases. So I'll pop that one off to one side, Let's pop that over there and my glitter. So what I've made sure also is I use my little levels here and I've also taped up the back you can see here I've tried to carefully tape up the back so if I get any resin little drips I should hopefully be able to pull them off and I've put my little push pins in so that it doesn't stick to the surface and then used my level and made sure all is well so that when I leave the resin it's not going to all just run off to one side uh, fingers crossed that is okay so Let's open these up and I'm going to measure into this little pot here. So I'm going to measure in a tablespoon of the resin first of all. I need it to be exact I think. So there we go, that's one tablespoon of the resin. Let's see, how much has gone out of my bottle? Not too bad. I guess that's probably about an eighth of the bottle. Okay, so now I've got my hardener. Let's make sure I've got all of that out of my spoon before I try and measure the hardener. We know good if it's already half full of the resin. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure a tablespoon of the hardener. And I need to try and get it exact because I understand if the ratios, whoops, I think that's good. If the ratios aren't right, it won't set up properly. And that obviously makes me nervous. Okay, so that's those. They're off to one side, they're done. I'm gonna scrape out that hardener. 
and I guess I need to wipe off this spoon this measuring spoon because it's going to set up in there otherwise isn't it I wonder if it would peel off maybe I should leave it and see so maybe I'll do that if I just pop it here I'm going to just put it out of view on the, on the plastic and we'll see I'm going to leave it in the spoon to harden up and then we'll see if I can pull it out later on. Okay, so time for stirring. And I understand it needs to be stirred for three minutes. So, come on phone, turn on. So I've set my timer for three minutes and you don't need to watch, but I'm gonna stir this now for three minutes and hopefully it will end up clear at the end of that time. Okay, time up, and here's my resin. As you can see, it's crystal clear, very thin and gloopy, but it runs really nicely. It's a bit like, I guess, the right consistency for the acrylic pouring paint. It's quite similar, very elastic, but of course it's got a lot of bubbles in it, so we will see what happens with that. So if I bring over my painting, I'm gonna do this one first of all. This is the one that has the uh, little glitter writing on so let me zoom in and we will make a start okay so all I think I'm going to do is just use my spoon to my stick rather to scoop a little bit off pour it into the center and let it spread out a little bit I want to ideally use a, probably about half of what I've got in here according to the resin calculator I should need about half so let's see I start to just spread it out and we'll see how far it goes. I'm probably going to go very quiet now because I'm concentrating. I'm quite nervous. I mean, I've not got much to lose here. It's not, it's not a, uh, a masterpiece, but obviously, you know, I want to, I want it to come out well because I don't want to waste my painting or my, or any of the money I've spent on the materials. Well, it's very easy to spread and it looks very glossy and smooth so that's nice looks good so far and all I'm doing so far is just taking it up to the edge of the canvas I am going to let it run over in a minute but I just want to practice with it and see you know if I did want to just take it up to the edge of the canvas how easy that would be to control and it looks really easy to control actually if I just wanted to take it up to the corner I'm just dabbing around the edge now with the stick it kind of domes up a little bit I'm sorry I'm, I'm talking down now I'm talking back up it's probably going up and down in terms of volume it's, it seems if I just kind of take the resin right up to the edge and dab it with the stick that it's quite easy to dome it up on the top of the canvas spread it a little bit more this way so maybe that's something I would try in future too or maybe I'll try it on the other one I don't know and see if I can dome it up without going over the sides that'd be an interesting exercise okay so that looks really good actually I'm very happy with how that's come out but I do want to practice going over the sides too so um, what should I do should I pop a little on my stick and then I'll just kind of run it along the sides a little bit, a little bit there, a little bit here, so it's bound to drip off a little bit, Whoops. and of course providing I've got a nice clean surface I can just pick those drips back off a bit like I do with the paint and pop it back on. Now, let's see, it'd be interesting to see as well how um, economical it is, you know whether the two tablespoons do, is the right amount for the two mini canvases. So, so far I've not got a, little, a lot of waste or dribble. Oh, there was a big dribble, too much on the stick. It does look really good though. It looks really good. It looks like it did when it was um, freshly painted, you know, that wet look that you get with your painting when it's brand new, when the colors really look um, glossy and, and bright 
and the glitter wow that looks fabulous now in this resin and as you know I'm a big fan of anything sparkly and glittery so it could be I'm about to fall in love with resin but I really hope I don't well you know even if I do I, I think I'll probably fall in love but I can't afford to use it on all of my paintings it might just be you know a, a little extra project or a little something to do from time to time oh I'm a little bit out of view let me bring it back for you there so that seems pretty good with the stick did I do all four sides no I've still got one I've not done let's do get in to do this one Pick up that dribble yeah it looks really good really good I've been pleasantly surprised actually how easy it's been so far of course you know until it's finished and dried and the tape comes off on the back I won't really know but that looks pretty fabulous I have just got some dribbles and I think I'll run the stick just underneath to take off any of those dribbles right now oh my goodness oh well that didn't help did it I just spilled it all over my plastic let's see how can I pick that back up oh what a mess okay it's out of view but yes I tipped my little plastic thing all over I've got a load on the plastic now but that's all right I can pick it up okay disaster averted most of it's picked up Okay, so if I come back here, again, I've got some more blobs on the plastic I can pick up too. I'm going to run the stick along the bottom, try and get rid of any little dribbles there. So I understand that I have like um, somewhere, I think, between 25 minutes and 45 minutes of working time with it, depending, I think, on the thickness and the temperature and those kind of things. But it's really hot here, so it should give me, hopefully, plenty of working time with it. Not that I'm going to need it for a, for a small piece like this. So, I'm going to put that out of the way. I've actually got all these dribbles. I can pick back up, pop in my cup. And let's take a look. That looks fabulous. So, I need to go over it with my torch. Ooh, I've got sticky stuff on my hands. Let me just rub those a little bit. Try and spread it out so I don't get resin on my torch too badly. So going over with the torch should pop any bubbles. And from what I understand, looking at the Art Resin website, you should keep coming back and looking over it for the next 45 to 60 minutes, because if there's any more bubbles that develop, then you can still torch it within that time and get rid of them. melted my plastic a little bit but that looks like glass now absolutely like glass beautiful the sides not so fabulous I think I've done them a bit thin this side is good yeah I think on the corners where I domed it up first of all and then I've done the side the very corner of the canvas I could probably redo that so I think what I'm going to do is put resin there let it dribble down over the sides that's probably what I should have done to start with but I was practicing with the doming just to see you know how that would work so that looks a bit better now I've been a bit more generous put it on the corners and let it dribble off the sides that's probably the way to go in future of course I'm trying to make this product go as far as I can so I've not been particularly generous with how much I've put on there. And it's my first time too, so you never know what's going to happen. Need a little bit more there. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to give it another go with the torch. Wonderful. Right, so I'm going to put this off to one side, then I'm going to work on the second one. My second little canvas is ready to go and I've got my resin left over so what I'm going to do is add just a tiny bit of glitter. I have no idea how much to add. What if I add 
just this amount, just a tiny amount on the end of my stick. I put that in first of all and stir it and let's see how that looks. I don't want to go crazy with the glitter. I just want there to be some, you know, so that it's just a, a bit of an experiment. First time adding any kind of additive into the glitter. And if I can add more sparkle to my paintings, you know I'm going to be happy with that. Okay, so that's just a, a minimal amount really. So let me now pop this on our little painting and we will take a look. Oh, I better put the top on that glitter because knowing the clumsy mood that I'm in, it could go everywhere. I'll be cleaning up glitter for a year. Okay, that in view, yeah. So this time I'm gonna just pour a little bit on and we'll see how it goes. And instead of trying to dome it like I did the first time, I'm just going to spread it all the way and let it run down over the sides straight away. I think that is good. I'm going to pop that one off to one side. And I've already, I've still got a fair bit left. So I'm going to go and have a look in my paintings and see if I've got another one that could benefit from a little bit of resin on it. Okay, so here we go for number three. I've still got plenty of this resin left. As you can see, all the glittery sparkles. But it seems to be thickening up just a little bit. It's um, when I stir it, it doesn't feel the same as it did with the first two. So it's starting to thicken a little bit. But I think we've still got plenty of working time. So I'm going to keep a little bit in there if I need it for the sides. Otherwise, exactly the same as I did on that last one. I'm going to try and take it to the sides and let it run over. Oh, yeah, there's a little blank bit there. So being able to look in the daylight helps. Let's see, that looks good. I need to use this torch thing again. Okay, so I've got a little bit of resin left in my pot here. And I think I will just leave that in there, leave the stick in there and we will see later on when it dries if I can just pull that out or not. So that will be interesting in itself to see if I can just pull that out later on. So I'm going to set that to one side. So let's bring in um, all of our paintings. So there we are, that's all three of them done. This first one with the clear resin with the glitter already on the painting and these two with the blue glitter um, added into the resin itself. So I'm going to babysit these for the next half an hour or so and just go over them with the torch in case there's any more bubbles that develop. And then they will take 24 hours to cure or dry, 30, 72 hours to fully cure. So I'm going to make sure I cover them so I don't get cat hair, fingers crossed, on them. And then I will show you what they look like when they're done. I'm really quite nervous and excited so I hope they're going to turn out well. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. My three first resin pieces are dry and I think we're going to call them the good, the bad and the downright ugly. Let's be positive and look at the good one. This is the first one that I did and if you take a look, this had the glitter writer on it. So I had the glitter on here before I put the varnish and if I can show you the finish on the varnish, it's absolutely beautiful. It's um, clean, clear, glossy, smooth, absolutely perfect. The only thing that isn't so perfect on this first one is the sides. Let's see if I can get it zoom in on the sides. I'm not sure if it will or, or will not. But the sides are a little bit uneven. Um, so where I domed the, the uh, resin up on the top first of all and then tried to cover the sides, you can probably see it here, the sides aren't very well covered. So I could have done a better job on those. But the sides aside, 
the top is absolutely flawless it's really really perfect and I'm delighted with it and of course the glitter looks fabulous too this is the one that just had the clear resin on it and then let me tell you a little story about these two so um, I put a cover on these, I put a cover on all of them, I came back about 15 minutes later to check for some bubbles and thought I'll torch if necessary. This one had what looked like a couple of little silver bubbles, this one had one. I torched over, I couldn't get rid of it. So I looked up close and I had you know, a really close look in there and I thought, goodness, what's wrong with this? It looks like it's got something in it. So then I got some tweezers and I was trying to pull it out and I thought, I don't know what it is. I can't seem to get it out. And of course at this time, the resin's been drying for a little while, it's kind of tacky, I'm messing up the surface. And then it dawns on me and I can't tell you how much of an idiot I felt when I realised what it was. Let's take a look, shall we? I bought some new push pins and these push pins have got a longer metal bit. Can't see, won't zoom there. The, the metal bit on these push pins were longer than my old ones and I put the push pins in here and they'd actually gone all the way through to the front. On this one, only one had gone through, this red one, and it's created um, a mess just here. So what I thought was a little silver bubble was actually the end of the push pin coming through into the painting and into the varnish, which is why I couldn't pick it out. So of course, with all of the messing that I did, the, um, the resin was already kind of setting up and I tried to use my stick to spread it out, but it was too late. So mostly the surface on this one is glorious. As you can see, it's smooth. It's got the fabulous glitter. Can you see the glitter? Oh my goodness. The glitter in here is absolutely spectacular. But of course, then I messed it up in this corner because I had the damn push pin in it. And then I was picking it up, you know, with my hands. So I've got you know, bits where I've put my fingerprints in the corners and things. So that's the bad. And then this one is the ugly. This one turned out even worse. This one, two of the push pins had come through. So I had two of these little bits in the front and I tried to pick them out. I couldn't work out what it was. And in the end, I just put my fingers all over it and I just messed up big time. So this one is not good. However, I don't think they're ruined. This one is, you know, beautiful as it is. And this one is a keeper. This one has just got, you know, one mess where I tried to um, get that damn push pin out the corner and probably a bit where I've stuck my thumb just here trying to pull it out. Um, and this one has obviously got a lot more problems where I was trying to handle it to get these damn push pins out. Um, but what I am going to do is because these are, these look so good and the, the glitter in them, you know, you can see it just here. The glitter in the resin just looks so, so good. It goes with the colours really well. So I, I'm actually going to um, not, I'm going to take these push bins out. I'm going to tidy up the back. I'm going to retape them and I'm just going to mix up an extra little bit of resin and put another coat on them on both of these and I think then it doesn't need to be a thick coat just because it's going to self level so where I've got all the little flaws in it I think it's going to um, cover those up and then it's going to look good and I don't need to put any more glitter on so just a, a quick coat of the clear clear resin I think that will be good but all in all um, here we go with the the good the bad and the ugly and the good is very good the bad and the ugly are still very good too with all that glitter there we go and the good thing is you know they're hard now so it's got a, a lovely smooth surface and unfortunately I do feel a little bit like I have fallen in love with resin um, it's certainly not going to be my focus going forward because my bank manager is not going to like it if I start buying resin and my husband will either but I think it's a really valid option and it was a lot easier to do than I thought aside from the two which I messed up through faults of my own with the, the, with the push pins I think um, those two if they'd come out as well as this one would have been really spectacular with that glitter in so thank you very much for watching my first ever resin experiment it's been interesting I've learned a lot I've also learned a lot about my push pins and where not to put them and uh, I hope to see you at acrylic pouring and maybe I'll try again with a little bit more resin in the future if anyone's interested let me know in the comments if you would like to see a little bit more about how to use resin on your paintings and maybe um, in a future one I'll even um, experiment with just doing like a little bit of resin art and we'll see how that turns out too thanks for watching